So the bachelorette, Rachel Lindsay, who is getting a divorce, her husband, Brian, is divorcing her, did a whole interview talking about how terrible and how bad their sex life is and that basically she don't want to have sex. She is too tiny. Personally, I feel something is wrong. Either it's too tiny, he ain't doing it right. He's not hitting the spot. She's not attracted to him. She don't like him. Something is wrong. And like I said in the video, I do understand that sometimes we are tired, but it is impossible, ma'am, for you to be tired every day, every week that you don't want to do the do with the husband. Now, in part of the interview, she said, girl, that they was on a retreat and they did not do the do. Her her husband was right there with her and instead of her getting on top of her husband and riding the pony and do the reverse cowgirl and bend down so he could see all that chocolate all that caramel and cocoa uh uh girl she took care of herself can you imagine imagine your husband is laying right there and instead of you oh mm, yes honey you know, I'll just take care of myself, which means taking care of yourself gives you a better result than if you do the do with your husband. Tell the truth. Hey, y'all. It's Wednesday. I think today is Wednesday. How y'all doing? Thank you for your love and support. Be sure to subscribe. Thumbs up. Share this out. Leave a comment for you, for me. I need to finish writing my book, my book on marriage. And I even thought about writing a sex book for Christian married couples. I really do think that a lot of married couples have issues in the bedroom because we don't make it a priority. Okay. You just, in one, in the book, the naked wife, uh, there's a story about bam, bam, thank you, ma'am, or something like that, where she said he just jump on, do what he gonna do, get hers, his, and get off. How terrible is that? Like husband and wife, sex is different for a man, for a husband, for a wife. When it comes to sex, men, husbands are a microwave. But wives, we are an old wooden stove that takes all day to warm up. So brothers, if husbands, if you want to minister to your wife or get ministered to, to by your wife, you need to start warming her up when you get up in the morning. When you pop your eyes open at five o'clock, that's when you start preparing your wife for 10 o'clock tonight. And sure, who don't love a good quickie? Oh, those are the best. But in marriage, intimacy, okay, I'm going to use the word intimacy because the kids are going back and forth now. Intimacy, intimacy, into me see, into me see, see, into me. Uh-huh, intimacy means to see into me. And we hear Rachel Lindsay saying how she's too tired. She said, frankly, I'm too tired. The girl says she, she offered her partner a hand job. And she was like, I can't even offer you a hand job. Her husband just go watch some porn or something. This is a wife telling this to her husband. That she is too tired. And yes, ladies, I understand. Every, every last one of us get tired. But you can't tell me you're tired every day or every week. And this is why, wise, we must really make sure that we really want to get married. Because when we get married, we must make our husbands a priority. We must make our kids a priority. And we must make ourselves a priority. And when you are too tired to not be able to fulfill your role in your marriage, there's a problem. 
Don't think that all this stuff that we see happening is by mistake. Husband and wife, marriage is a picture of Christ and the church. The husband is representative of Christ. Christ, the wife is representative of church. When a husband and wife come together, it is like when the church come together and worship the Lord and pray and praise him and honor him. In other words, when a husband and wife comes together, it's worship. So for those of us in the body, picture you going before the throne of God and you're tired. You can't pray. This is why I don't understand people do their their one on their their um quiet time at nights. I don't know how they do it. I have to read my Bible in the morning, read my devotion, and pray in the morning because I'm well rested, I'm alive, I'm well at nights, girl. I don't. I told my I'm only good for one thing at night. My husband's like, uh-huh. <laughs> so both husband and wife must make it a priority to be ministering to each other throughout the day. Text me, call me, how you doing? If 12 o'clock come and Mike don't call me, I'm like, hold on, wait a minute, why Mike can't call me all day? Or text me. Send me flowers. Send me flirty messages. Yesterday was raining so bad. We had a rainstorm here in New Jersey. And when my husband can't pick me up, I was like, I just want to go home and cuddle with you. And another thing, every time you lay in the bed, it's not to have sex. Sometimes you just need to lay in the bed and cuddle. Hold hands. Watch a movie together. Sit on the couch. Put your hand on his leg. You put your hand on, you, he's driving in the car. Put your, hold hands. Put your hands on his leg. Rub his back. All of those things that we do is making our intimacy a priority. It's not just, oh, you know, oh my God, he gonna want it tonight. No, no, no. If he was warming you up all Day by the time it's time, you're gonna be bubbling over because husbands, you've been doing it all day. Those of you husbands who have your wives working two and three jobs to provide, uh, you know, you get what you get because a wife is not supposed to be so stressed and, and overworked that she is not, she's so exhausted that when it comes time to ministry, she can't minister. And ladies, this is why I go so hard and tell you, a husband is a choice. You need, my single ladies that's dating for marriage, to choose a husband who is able to provide so that you are not so stressed out. And I think that's why I, I don't, because... My things, my husband protect, my husband protect, I don't need anything. Let me tell you, anything I need, anything, my husband will do. My husband, I call my mic, it's rain, can you go get me some soup? Mike will leave his job, drive to East Orange, go get me some soup to drop it off to me. So when it comes time, baby, I'm ready. Because throughout the day, you are doing these things to warm her up. And I think a big part of wives not wanting to minister to their husband is because husbands are not ministering to your wives. You're not warming her up. You have her working two or three jobs. She is so tired and so exhausted from working two or three jobs, coming home, taking care of the kids, doing homework, washing, cooking, cleaning. You work, you come sit on the couch and watch her do all these things. And then you wonder why she, she not ready. She's too tired. Maybe if you help her, let me tell you, I am so turned on by my husband doing stuff for me. When I ask him to zzz, the kitchen floor, cause you know, you got to use the machine. Zzz, I'm like, you woke up, Sarah? <laughs> I have an undershirt on. 
by the way, for those of you who's going to be saying something in the comments. Huh? When, whenever my husband does anything, oh my God, and when he cooks for me, maybe that's why he cooks so much for me. <laughs> if I say, Mike, could you take this basket down to the basement? It just does something to me. I love it when he does things for me. And a lot of you husbands have your wives working like a field animal and then you whine and complain why she is always tired or don't want to do it. Granted, wives, I believe, like 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 Rachel was saying, right? Rachel's wearing all these hats that she's putting on by herself. You want to do this. You want to do that. You want to be this actor. You want to be on this show. You want to be on that show. When you told the man you was ready to get married and have four kids, and now you're talking about, well, maybe my priorities have changed. And you know he's a family man wanting to have kids and you're running all over the place wearing this hat, this hat, and you too tired. So a lot of these things, ladies, we put on ourselves, you all, you in 56 uh, uh, um, thing at the church every day of the week, you at the church, you're too tired and you're not making your priority, your marriage a priority, ministering to each other a priority. And so it don't work. Because this is what keeps us together. It's the glue that keeps us together. Even the Apostle Paul says, don't go on no fast without talking to your mate. And after the fast, you make sure you come back together so you're not tempted and you don't give the enemy no place in your marriage. I need to write my book. I'm going to write my book. I just need time. I just need time. I just need time. My heart goes out to Rachel, and I just think something is going on. She don't like him. Like somebody said, my cousin, she don't like him. Something is wrong. He can't do it. He ain't hit the spy. He can't. And, and, and another thing, yes, she did. She said she each dude was a day in between. So she had relations with the th her three top guys whoever said she didn't say she did oh she only did it with brian no she didn't she said i feel so liberated why you think she feel liberated because she did it with three guys in a week and that's another thing ladies this is let me tell you y'all think that god don't know what he do this is why god says we shouldn't be doing the do before we get married because women remember we are incubators Right? Let me see my car. We're incubators. So here you go. Guy number one. Guy number two. Guy number three. Guy number four. Guy number five. Then you pick guy number three. And it's good for about a month. And then y'all start having problems. All of a sudden, he's not satisfying you no more. You know why? Because guy number one, two, three, four, five, six, fifty-five is fighting against your husband seed inside of you. And all of a sudden, no, you want him to bend you over this way, kiss you this, all this stuff this way. So a lot of us, both men and women, because the Bible says, young men, don't give your strength to whorish women. Y'all need to get delivered before you get married. This is why being celibate before you get married is going to cleanse your heart and your mind and your soul and your spirit of all of those men you've slept with. Because every time, my dad told me this, he said, every time you allow a man to do that, he is putting an imprint in your brain and you're a notch on his belt. This is why God says it is best for each man woman have your own husbands. Do not fornicate because every guy is leaving an imprint on your kitty brain. I got to go, girl. I love you. Let me know what you think. Talk to you later. Remember to show me love in my comments. My cash app is down there. Love you. Talk to you later. Bye.